Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live on Tuesdays. I'm happy to be here today. I want to tell you some stories first before I get into the meat of what we're talking about today, which is about uh, finding motifs to place your garments on and matching things and all of that. But, you know, I think as everyone is experiencing, uh, things are not always going as smoothly as you want or wish, and you can't always accomplish what you want to accomplish for whatever reason. And that kind of happened to me last week. I had a couple of days uh, where everything just seemed to kind of go wrong. And then I lost a tennis match on Saturday. And of course, that just set it all off. And I lost it badly. And you know, it's the way it goes. So yesterday, I decided that I was going to take a moment and actually sit down and take an online class doing some sketching and watercolor. Now, I've been trying to sketch for a long time, and I'm not very good at it. And I certainly have never even picked up a brush and watercolor. But there's a woman in Berkeley, California, and she has a website called lineacarta.com. And she has online, one-hour, daily sketch classes. So I signed up for one. And last night, took the class, and she started off with three minutes of breathing which I needed to do. I needed to breathe in, breathe out, relax my shoulders, feel the, my body into the chair, you know, the whole thing like that. Something that I never take the time to do. I'm always rushing and meeting deadlines and trying to figure out why I'm behind or whatever. And so that three minutes of introductory breathing was an amazing thing and it made me realize I need to do that before I sew. Sewing is supposed to be relaxing, but if you haven't taken a breath before, then maybe the sewing doesn't work that day. So this is my little result. We, we drew lipstick tubes yesterday, and this is my little lipstick tube and my watercolor. And by the end of the one hour, I felt like a totally different person. So I'm just telling you that not everything is about sewing, but being creative in some way, whether it's perfection or not, can be really helpful. And I recommend this woman. She was a good teacher, and, and the other students in the class were really fun to see what they were doing, and I really enjoyed myself thoroughly. So I had another moment. I was all geared up to show you this Hugo top today that I have on. That and I and to be proud and show you how I match the motifs down the edge of this down the center front. And of course, I am, you know, I've lost this tennis match. My mind is not really where it should be. But it was Sunday, and Tuesday's Facebook Live, and that was my deadline. And so I decided to, I had to do it anyway. And I took the time to cut it out and make the whole garment in one day. I allowed myself one day to do this project. And of course, you know, the phone's ringing and I'm distracted and I'm not really in a good place anyway. And I am working on this whole facing um, concealed buttonhole affair that happens in the Hugo Top. And I'm about ready to assemble the whole front and I realize I haven't matched this at all. I have no idea what I've done. All my careful planning just didn't happen. So, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't matter who you are, how many years of experience you've had sewing. Sewing is for relaxation. And so forget the deadlines. Sew for pleasure. Breathe before you start. You get it. OK. So we're going to talk about matching motifs today. But I want to talk about one quick little thing about some fabrics that we just got in. We've been having difficulty getting anything that's being shipped out of Japan. It's apparently on the slow boats to Japan, or to the United States. But we did get in four really cool little fabrics that I want to show you. And we didn't get much yardage in. They're very small bolts, so they'll go pretty quickly, I think. But I just wanted to show you, because they're very unusual. This is what's called a canvas. I don't consider it a canvas at all. It's really just a, a linen, about a mid-weight linen. But this is a wonderful color combination and a very soothing color, 
combination as well with natural and this dusty pink. So I, I love this. Now, you talk about some motif matching. This would be one where you would consider it a stripe and a continuous motif as well and something that might need to be matched. I love this. It's a very lightweight cotton with the sprinkles on it that change in density at the selvages. So it's a beautiful, beautiful, almost sateen. has a little bit of a sheen to it, but really beautiful fabric. would make a beautiful shirt. And no matching there. This one is a lightweight, almost handkerchief weight linen. And I don't know, you probably would have a hard time picking up the pattern on this because it's so delicate, very feminine. And the little motifs on it have a bit of an iridescent print on top of some of the flowers. But I just love this. And this would be a pattern that I wouldn't bother to think about matching at all. But very happy color, beautiful yellow. And this is another one that has this very random pattern into it. And it also has some writing on it. Every once in a while there's some writing that of course I can't read. But again, a cotton. I should make sure it's cotton. No, it's linen. This is linen. Very lightweight handkerchief linen. So I just wanted to show you the, the really interesting things that come out of Japan for us. And these are designed really by quilt makers. I think some of the most interesting designs come from people who design in the quilt world. And not every quilt fabric translates into a fabric for a garment, I don't think. But these do, and I just wanted to show them to you today. So back to matching motifs. So you want to think about uh, the fabric that you're going to purchase or that you have for matching. What needs to be matched and what doesn't need to be matched. And we'll talk about that when I actually show you some fabrics. But there are some things you need to think about in terms of placing this fabric on your body. For instance, if something has big flowers or some sort of a dominant motif, you need to be careful and not place that in bust point areas or hip areas, or you need to balance the, uh, the, the larger motif in some place that, that feels balanced with the rest of you. Um, maybe think about uh, eliminating some seams. So if a pattern has a back seam, for example, and it would be easy to cut that on the fold, then you want to Make sure that you're highlighting all of the print as best you can, and so eliminate what seams you can as well, center backs being the most obvious one, and sometimes some other seams as well. Now when you purchase the fabric, that's a little bit tricky. Um, we don't always put the repeat on our website, but that's something that I think we need to start doing, and we have done it on some of the fabrics on our website. So if you have the fabric at home, you need to measure the repeat. And most of the time, a vertical repeat is mostly what you need to pay attention to. But there are horizontal repeats as well. The fabric, for instance, that I'm working with here did not repeat itself in width, only in length. So you have to study the fabric and see what's happening and how often that motif that is dominant and you want to place in a certain place, how often that happens. So do you, want to, you need to purchase some extra fabric. I used to think that you should um, at least purchase one more motif, one more repeat. But now I've decided that if you have a front piece and a back piece, that you probably need to buy enough for at least one to two more of the length of those pieces. It's like you can't have enough. Um, this um, lemon fabric that I cut out over the weekend you can see that I had to chase the motif. Well, it's here someplace. Here we go. I had to go and find the motif that I wanted, and it was in the middle of nowhere, really. And all of this was for the rest of the pieces. But, of course, I didn't do a good job, but I only missed it by an inch. So I'm in, I'm in the general vicinity of where I needed to be. Um, but 
missed it. But nevertheless, you need that extra fabric to work with and one or two more repeats or the length of some pattern pieces would be good, a good addition to uh, yardage that you need to purchase. So when you're cutting out, you need to cut out single layer. There's no way that you're going to be able to stack repeats on top of one another or make sure that things match up if you're trying to cut things on the fold. Now we cut a lot of things out single layer anyway. I've learned that that's the best way to, to actually cut things out on the straight of grain. But for sure when you're cutting things that where motifs have to match, it's going to be single layer. If you have a pattern piece that's cut on the fold, let's say it's something that has a center back. Go ahead and make a full pattern piece out of tissue paper. And if you've downloaded a pattern and it's downloaded on a hard paper, then you want to trace it on tracing paper, something that you can see through, so that when you put your pattern piece on the fabric, you can see the design, so you know exactly where you're placing things. It's very important. So if you have a front that's cut twice, you want to make another front pattern piece so that you have two. If you have sleeves, make a second sleeve. Wherever it's important that motifs match, you want every pattern piece ready to cut out on your fabric so that you're not moving things a lot. And once you place them and you've checked it five times, I only checked mine four apparently, um, you know that you're good to go. So you're going to start with the uh, front piece. I have the front piece up here on the board. And I've made a decision of where I want to put some lemons and leaves or whatever the motif is that uh, you find this motif that has something that you can kind of look at and identify. You say, oh, that's a complete motif and I like that and I want it right there. So I have placed the one front on the, on the fabric. It's pinned and ready to go. And I am tracing just an outline of the motif that's spanning the center front and the outer fold. Now this is important because you, you want to pay attention to where the actual garment is going to end. And in this case, on this Hugo top, the edge is a ways from the center front, but this fold line I needed to pay attention to. And that's of course where I didn't do well on the one that I have on. So you want to, you want to pay attention to the center front and you want to pay attention to the outer fold, whatever that is. It could be five-eighths of an inch. It could be a seam line because you have a separate facing. It could be several inches because there's an overlap. Whatever that is, those are the two lines you want to pay attention to. And my design straddles both of those. So then you take the corresponding piece. And in the case of the Hugo, the two fronts are two different pieces. There's more of a turn back on the right front than there is on the left front. So my match point is the center front line. So I'm going to hold this over the center front. And then I'm going to trace the design that, that's underneath it exactly where that is. Again, straddling the center front line. So I've just done a tracing over the design that I've already traced underneath. Now, I also realized that what I did not do was I didn't check it after I'd done this. And the way to check that is to actually fold along the line that's going to be the leading edge of the front, in this case the right front. And I'm going to match my center fronts and now I can see that that leading edge follows the motif exactly as planned. So that's how you do that. One of the things that we have done in So Confident is we've, we've um, addressed that situation. This is a garment, this is the detour jacket that is one of the patterns that you get with So Confident 
2020. It's one of the four patterns that's exclusive to So Confident this year, and only So Confident members have this pattern. But you can see that I've matched the motif. It's both sort of a stripe and there's a floral motif to match as well. And all of that and just what I've said here is detailed in the monthly magazine. So this is a printout of the magazine. And after all the beauty shots in the front, then we get into the matching of that garment and how you do it. So it, for those of you who are So Confident members or if you want to become a So Confident member, in addition to this video, which will be on our website and also on YouTube so you can watch it again, in addition to this, you can find it in your So Confident issue two of series nine. So the other thing that's interesting about this Hugo top is that it has a little loop a button loop at the top. And I've always found that button loops are sort of hard to make. I own every tool known to man for turning tubes. I own long ones, short ones, all of it. But somewhere along the line, I discovered that I have this, which is called a ballpoint bodkin. It has a little ball at one end and what I call an eye at the other end. So it's really a big needle with a ball on it. Can you see it better over here against the background maybe? Okay, Ball, ballpoint bodkin. It's a very inexpensive tool, $4. We have them, you're gonna want one. So I owned this for like 50 years, maybe 70 years, I'm not sure, long time. And finally, somewhere along the line, I wish I could credit the person who taught me how to use it. This is the number one <clears throat> turning tool, in my opinion. The thing about this is you can turn endless tubes. So many of the, tu the uh, tube turning tools that are on the market have a sort of limit to how long a tube you can turn. But if you need nine yards of tubing, this is your person. This is your guy. Uh, so it, can, it works for short ones and long ones. So I'm going to show you how it works. Now, the tube piece for this particular garment is actually very small. So I'm going to use a sample that's bigger so that hopefully you can see it a little bit better. But I have turned the tube, which is cut on the bias. Tubes look better when they're cut on the bias than when on the straight because then they'll make a nice soft turn. I've folded this in half with the right sides together and I've sewn this and then I've trimmed it so I only have about an eighth of an inch of seam on the tube. Again, this is a lot bigger but you get the idea. So then I took, take the ball end of this and stick it down through the opening until the top of it, the top of the eye is pretty even with the top of the fabric, the tube. And I have a double strand of thread that's knotted. And now I'm going to actually sew through that eye, give it a few anchor stitches. maybe two or three stitches. They don't have to be ni nice and tidy because you're, not, you're never going to see them. And then I want the end of this to be smaller. So I'm going to just wrap this so it's much smaller. And I'm going to knot it off. I don't have any scissors here, so I'll Hopefully I can pull this. Aaron's going to grab me some scissors. I'm using polyester thread for a reason, and so of course that doesn't doesn't uh, can't get it apart without some scissors. All right, so this is what it looks like now. <clears throat> so now I'm going to begin to push the tubing over the bodkin. 
and I'm going to start it by, I have to kind of force this end. You always want to cut the little piece of bias longer than you need because the ends never look that great when you're all done with it. And you're going to be cutting off a little bit anyway. So now I've gotten that started. So now it's easy to just continue to pull this through. And I'll cut off the end. And there's my tube. Now, in the Hugo, we have you actually make a little prairie point where the end is actually pressed into, I call it a little rooftop. In the quilter's world, it's a prairie point. For us, it's more like a little rooftop. You can make a tube any size, any width, any length. For instance, this is the tube that you would make for the Hugo top. Very, very tiny. You can make it as small as the width of this ball. And on the bias, you can probably even make it smaller than that because it'll stretch out just a little bit. But this is the tube that you will use for the top of this. We have this tube um, closure on our Hugo top, on our Mixit top, shows up our salsa blouse. So there's two or three patterns in our line where we use tubes because we really like this detail. So ballpoint bodkin. There you go. So you can see in these garments that I have matched the pattern. This is the detour jacket. Now this is the Berwick street tunic. And you can see that I, I've matched this as well. And this one was even trickier because this has a double fold back concealed placket in the front. But as long as I determine where that edge is on the pattern, then that edge is what matches the pattern. And I lined up my center fronts. So I, I replicated this condition in tissue on my pattern so I knew exactly what folded and what lined up. But it's the same process that I've shown you here for just a single fold back. This one is pretty straightforward. Just a simple edge, 5 eighths of an inch from the center front, which is where the buttons are. And these motifs line up nicely. Now, when all was said and done with my Hugo top, I just about threw in the towel. I was so discouraged because I was so excited about the idea that all these lemons were going to be full lemons. But you know what? I decided it looks pretty good. I, I don't know that it, walking around anybody would say, that girl's motifs do not match up. That's just really offensive. So I decided you, you can get away with a lot of, of fabrics uh, that are not, uh, that maybe should be matched that you don't have to match. I, a couple of other little notes about the Hugo top while I'm at it. Uh, my friend Catherine from Florida called last week and she said, Linda, I have this problem with the Hugo top. It won't stay pleated at the bottom. And yet the picture on the front of your envelope shows it pleated. Well, I'm here to tell you that this pleat will never, it will never do this. It will always splay open a little bit. So just know that. The other thing that I discovered is that I've been, I've been always making a certain size of this garment. And for whatever reason, over the weekend, I decided to make one size smaller. And I thought, well, I just don't want quite as much ease through the bust and the hip on this garment that I've been making before. And so I'll go one size down, because I know it will, it will fit the bust. Now that I have it finished and it's on, I realize that we built this pattern to be a more oversized garment than what I'm wearing today. And that I'm feeling some strain through here. And so the fit of this garment has a lot to do with the arm's eye, the sleeve band, and the shoulder seam. And it's not just about fitting through the busts. So think about that when you're choosing your size. Uh, you may or may not want to go a size down, but Whatever the size is on the back of the pattern envelope, if your bust measures 44 and that says you should make a large, you should make a large, even though you could fit in a medium. So just a little note with that. All right, I want to show you some other garments. I want to show you how cute the Hugo top is 
as a dress. Now this fabric has a lot going on with it. Not only are there motifs that could be matched, but it also has horizontal stripes. So when I made this, I decided to ignore the matching of the motif because obviously I'm no good at it on, on Hugo's. <laughs> but I did decide that the, the horizontal stripes were much more important to match. And so that is what's happened here. Um, I hope. Yes. <laughs> so you can see at the side seams, I've matched the stripe. And I purposely chose where I wanted the dominant stripes. You can see that this is a little darker and a little more concentrated. And so I wanted that lower. And I wanted the lighter colors up near my face. And so I was very particular about where I put these stripes. I didn't put certain stripes in certain places. And so I thought about it. But I didn't choose to match two ways, either a stripe or a motif down the front. But this is a great summer dress. Um, I want to show you just this, what I'm talking about with this detail that is very interesting and actually takes you a little bit more time to make than you might think. This looks like a very simple, or it, does, it looks like a quick garment to make. And it's not like epic, but it does take you a little while to make this double placket which I think is one of its beautiful features anyway. But just know that you need to spend some time, sew precisely, mark things well, and you'll be able to get it done. So I want to show you some other things. If you are not interested in matching very many things, particularly on a stripe, think about changing the direction of things. So for instance, this is our Zane top which I happen to love. Uh, it's a design that Brianna worked on and designed. And I think it's quite clever and very flattering on everyone who wears it. You can make this in a knit or a woven. This happens to be a rayon chalet. And you can see that there's a center front seam here. And there needs to be the seam. This is one case where you have to have the seam because this is one piece and this is separate. So there is some matching that goes on here. But I chose to change the directions of the stripe here because matching it here to this and here was just too complicated. So you can change the direction of things. Same thing happens in the back, matching at the top, but not necessarily at the bottom. This is another version of the detour jacket, and we made it into a coat. This was actually... Uh, issue one of series nine, So Confident 2020. This was the featured garment. Again, this was a stripe. So rather than having to match across the front, this stripe is running vertically on one side and horizontally on the other. Another good way to deal with not matching this is a fabric that I probably would have matched, but when you divide it with something like a stripe or a check or a contrasting fabric or a solid color or a different print altogether, then you don't notice that that print is not matched. That is a barrier, a visual barrier. This is our Sienna top extended into more of a tunic and some splits on the side. I love the idea of adding the black and white check because I like to add black and white checks to everything. And so I always try to have some black and white somethings on, uh, on hand. So that's the Sienna top. All right, let's look at some fabrics. So one of the fabrics that I like best for the Hugo top in a lot of our shirts, the Berwick Street tunic, the Hugo dress, uh, the Sienna, are fabrics that have a lot of drape to them. And when you work with rayon chalets and certain cottons, you get that kind of beautiful drape. So these are viscose crepes and chalets, kind of a combination. So this one, I love this. It has this incredible uh, concentrated motif. This is 
a, pa a fabric that I would definitely want to match across the front or place those motifs in the right place. I want to show you what we think goes with it, of course. This is a solid colored linen. Look how beautiful those reds are. This would make a great pair of pants. I have on the Picasso pants in the yellow washed linen, and this would make a great pair of Picasso pants or Hudson pants or Mimosa pants, West End pants. I can't think of a pant it wouldn't work on, actually. So top or bottom or reversed. You know, there are those of us who may not want to wear a, a print on the top, make the pants in the print and the solid for the top. Here's a gorgeous color. Oh, this is the bottom one, actually. Actually, it does go with this, doesn't it? <laughs> it goes with either one, so we'll just hold it in the middle. Um, this is a, a beautiful tangerine uh, linen. This is one of the washed linens as well. And I love this because it has this funny little bird on it. Um, so this is a pattern that I also think should be matched. I could also see the circumstances where you wouldn't have to, where this has a definite motif that's clearly a standout motif. This is a little more blurred and blended, and probably you could get away without matching it. Or you could put that um, tangerine linen as a stripe down the middle of it and not match it, not even think about it. This color, I love this. This is a cross-dyed linen. When you're dealing with cross-dyes, you have one color of thread for the warp and another color of thread for the woof, or long, lengthwise and crosswise. So it turns it into a, a different color. You can see by the selvage what the actual color of the yarn is that's on the cross grain. And then they've used white, or off-white probably, for the uh, lengthwise grain. But this is beautiful. This actually goes with all of them, in my opinion. And we have some more over here. Uh, this one, uh, let's hold up the red. You hold up the red. We have this gorgeous big print. Now this is a print that I think definitely has to be matched. Nice combination with the red. And then if you reach down and get the cross dyed, Aaron's helping me. This is what gets me out of breath on these videos. Yeah, this is a pretty combination too, where you have something more bold and something more subtle. Yeah, it's, nice with the yeah it's really pretty. But that's a cotton. It's not voile, but it's definitely pretty lightweight, so there's a lot of drape and flow to that fabric. All right, you hold this. This is called sea salt. I love the name of that fabric color. Put that with this very graphic black, white, and neutral. So you don't have to put black or white. You can put an off color. There is a little bit of a taupey gray shadow to this flower on this motif, but I think this is really interesting for something a little bit more monochromatic. Especially in the summer, I think. Summer, yes. Yes. Okay. I don't know why linen is so heavy, but it is. <laughs> This is a bold floral that I think would need to be matched, but I love it. it. It settles it down a little bit with the aqua for either the top or the bottom. Nice cotton shirting, very good feel to it. I love this sketchy part. See, it reminds me of what I've, I'm going to learn to do in my sketch, sketch class. You're doing the print now. <laughs> Look at this fabulous combination. Perfect. You don't see brown and lime very often together. You think of lime and black, but this brown really makes this quite different. And I think the vegetation is unusual as well. It's not just a traditional flower has a spikiness to it that I like a lot. So
So you've seen the combination that I have on. We don't have very much of the lemon fabric left. And this is the linen that I have on my Picasso pants. It's not an exact match, but I don't think it, it matters. I think that you, when you squint and stand away from things and, and squint, things will either work or not work. It's a good way to actually um, observe things. This I had with the red or the orange or the pink, this, this one. This is this Etro, very classic, sort of paisley design. This would also go with the red, and it would be gorgeous with black. You know, we have our black cotton and lycra back in stock again that I like so well for the uh, Picasso pants. And navy. Well, and that's right, navy does work. It has navy and black in it, you're right. I don't really have a family for this, but I think just with off-white, there's nothing better than this crisp look. Again, I think a pattern that would need to be matched. Not necessarily for pants at side seams and that sort of thing, but down the front of something, probably. But this beautiful rayon chalet, super drapey. All right. Do we have any questions? Uh, I'm assuming we're talking about the Madrid top. Yes. Matching plaids on the Madrid top. Do I have any tips? That is exactly the same thing. That usually in a the plaid, there's at least a horizontal match. And, well, there's a vertical match as well. So you're going to lay those pattern pieces, your, your right front, let's say. Let's see. Forgotten which way it goes. Does it button? Which is this? I think it's the left that buttons over the right. Okay, so you take the left front, the one that's going to be on top of the other one, and you would place that on your fabric. And you would mark and draw those plaids. And then you would be able to insert that other pattern piece behind it and connect that and continue the plaid so you'd know where to place that other piece. It's the same, same theory. Hugo dress, this fabric is no longer available. I am so sorry. Um, and then the Zane top, does it have a zipper in the back? The Zane top uh, does have a zipper. It's an invisible zipper. So there's a zipper, a seven inch zipper at the neckline. This is a, a garment, if you make it in a woven, that it does need a zipper or at least a keyhole opening. I'm trying to think in the pattern. Did we do a keyhole in the pattern? And I just did a zipper? I can't remember. I'm thinking that in the pattern it's a keyhole opening with a loop. There you go. Uh, but for some reason I put a zipper in it. Um, and then, yeah, and then, otherwise then in a knit, you don't need a, a closure. You can get it over your head. Yeah. Um, we have multiple questions about the shirt that I have on. <laughs> okay, well come around here. Erin has on, uh, if people want to see what Erin has on. This is our Eureka top uh, in this, the most popular fabric we've ever had ever, a cubist knit. So it's a cotton knit with a little bit of lycra in it, another cotton knit for the sleeve. But this has been cut up a little bit with a side panel in a stripe, and we have lots of stripes as well. How to do this is on our website, on our blog. So you go to our website, sewingworkshop.com, you go to the blog, and then over on the right-hand side is an index, and you can click on Eureka Top, and this, the instructions for doing this will come up, and that's at no charge to you. You want to show the back, though? That, that, has, that shows the cut-up portion. So you can replicate that very same thing. I don't think... Do we have this red fabric? We did. I'm not sure. We it might. I think we do. still have it. And, and, we have, and we have other stripes. So, yeah, you can get a similar look if you want to. Okay. Can you comment on um, um, the size of a floral motif in relation to one's body size? Can, you, can I comment on the size of motifs 
motifs in relation to body size? Um, that's an interesting question because, you know, the, I suppose, common theory is the larger the person, the smaller the motif should be. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think it's sort of where you place it. Uh, not only the motif itself on you, but whether it's a top or a bottom. I'm, this is the year or the season of huge prints. And I think they're beautiful on a lot of people. So I think you want to make things that are flowy, perhaps. If, let's say you're a larger person and you're worried about a large motif. Make something that drapes and flows. And so the pattern is not just flat against you and you're seeing every little flower, but something that uh, it's just sort of a general range of color that's draping. So I say go for it. You know, I, I'm, I think if, when things are just too many printed, um, that's not necessarily a great thing either. So I like a mix. Or mix it up, you know, do kind of what she's done. Do a bold something and then mix it with a solid or a stripe or a smaller scale. When you're mixing patterns, you want to, you want to uh, watch about scale. And stand again, I do a lot of standing back. I put things on the floor. I may maybe get a pile of fabrics or scraps and I put them on the floor and I stand back and I squint. And that squinting, all of a sudden, the wrong one will pop out for you. You'll know which one needs to be kicked aside. How do you match sleeves? Sleeves are matched at the notch. So you make a note of where the notch is on the front. And then that notch that's on the corresponding sleeve is placed on the seam line at the same place. Not just at the cut edge, but on the seam line. So let's say you're working with a stripe. Uh, and I'm gonna, my notch on the garment is in the middle of a black stripe. Well, that notch on the sleeve is going to be placed in the middle of a black stripe. And so sleeves are only going to match for a little bit right through here. Not here, not here, and probably not in the back. Um, okay, can you show the um, detour again? Can, um, can I show the detour again? Yes. This is the, uh, when you are a member of So Confident 2020, you get the pattern, it's a download pattern. And if you were to make it, this is what it looks like. It's long sleeve. This is the length. It has a beautiful yoke to it. This is the garment that has, we've underlined it. This is a, a little lightweight wool chalet. I underlined it and did some Hong Kong finishing on the hem. So it's just as pretty on the inside as it is on the outside. The coat is nothing more than a lengthened detour with no closures. Everything else is the same. And this one is lined. And so the, the learning skill in issue one of 2020 is how to create a lining for a pattern that does not come with a lining pattern. So lining a garment was the skill in issue one matching motifs and underlining and Hong Kong finishes were the techniques that you learned in issue two of this year. So for all the beauty that goes on with our magazines, and it's you know lots of inspiration of beautiful photography and fabrics and garments, a good third of this is how to do, how to do something with these patterns, um, either fabric-wise or interior-wise or altering it to look like a different kind of garment. Would you ever deliberately mismatch a huge pattern in order to introduce a vertical line? Would I ever mismatch a vertical, a vertical motif in... Um, a huge print in order oh. to introduce a vertical line. Would I ever mismatch a huge print to create a vertical line? Yeah. I would have to, I think every fabric has something to study about it. And if that seems to create something that's vertical, I don't know why not. I don't know that that's universal for everything that's big like that, but with that particular fabric you're talking about, sounds like a good idea. We generally carry black and white check. 
Uh, I would have to see if we have some, and if not, I need to order some. So that's something we tend, tend to try to have on hand, and I'll, I'll have to check. I, I have the feeling that we might be out of it at the moment, but I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll do a link if we have it, but I'll get some on order. There are, and, and we usually carry two different sizes of check, the large one like this one and a smaller one as well. I like the fabric very well. It's a shirting, so it's a woven check. It's not a printed check. You don't want print checks. Well, I guess you could, but the woven checks are much, much nicer. Okay. And everyone just loves your lemon top. It looks just perfect the way it is. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we're on tap for next Tuesday. I have something really great in mind for you, so I hope to see you then. Thanks so much for everything.